Hi, I'm Quentz. Welcome to the sixth in my series of reviews for season one of the Playdate Panics handheld gaming console. Each week, two brand new games from different developers appear, like magic, on your Playdate system. This video marks the official halfway point of season one, and week six's games are Hyper Meteor and Zipper. Kicking it off with Hyper Meteor from developer Vertex Pop. Hyper Meteor is a shoot 'em up space game wherein you control a little ship, zoom it around the screen, crashing into asteroids, or I guess meteors. It's a little bit like that one game with the asteroids, but with meteors. Again, you don't shoot anything in this game, you just smash into stuff. The trick is that most obstacles have a black side and a white side. And if you touch the black side, you'll explode and lose a life. But if you hit the white side, you blow it up and you're rewarded with points. It's sort of like that other big shooty game, Ikaruga, except you can't switch the colors. You've also got a thruster option, which makes you go faster. But if you rely on it too much, it's more likely you'll crash into something you're not supposed to because you're a little more unwieldy. And you also have a bomb that destroys everything on screen if you get desperate. What really makes this game sing is that you can build up combos by hitting obstacles accurately and quickly without making any mistakes. Obviously, if you die, the combo gets reset, but it also gets reset if you wait too long between hits. The game only gives you a few precious seconds to find your next target and collide with it, so you've gotta be constantly on the lookout for where you're headed next. Of course, you could play it slow and safe and just gain points gradually over time, but that's not cool. What's cool is constantly slamming on the thrusters and wildly careening around trying to rack up massive combos. After a while, you start to get good at determining how long it takes you to get from one point to another and what the rotation patterns are of the asteroids, again, meteors, I don't know, so you can safely gauge when to speed up and when to slow down without losing too much momentum. The bigger space rocks will break apart into smaller but faster space rocks when hit. And if you leave too many of those bouncing around the screen, it's gonna be trouble, so you need to pick your battles carefully. You may even want to wait until there are more of the smaller but easier to hit obstacles on the screen so that you know you have a backup, something that you can crash into in between larger, more challenging obstacles, again, to keep your combo meter running. After taking enough things out, your level will increase, as indicated at the bottom of the screen, and that results in more challenging types of obstacles appearing, including ones that do actually shoot at you. So that's gonna provide more of a challenge, and it's gonna be harder to survive longer against those harder enemies, but if you do get enough points, you will earn extra lives and extra bombs that you can use. The controls in Hyper Meteor are just perfect. Your movement is entirely dependent on the crank, which you might think could be a little awkward, but it feels so natural almost immediately when you start playing. And because the controls only get dicey once you start using those thrusters, you know it's entirely on you if you make any mistakes. The real secret sauce here is that control scheme combined with the combo meter. I don't know if I can articulate it that well, but it just feels so good and so addicting to be racing around, trying to keep your combos going, trying to plot out courses and decide in the moment, you really have to think on your feet here, where is the next spot that I'm gonna hit and how can I get there as quickly as possible without running into anything else along the way. The sound effects and the visuals of the obstacles exploding on impact, there's this subtle little screen shake and the game slows down for just half a second when you hit something and it's so, so satisfying when you're in that zone. Hyper Meteor comes from the same team that made Graceful Explosion Machine, a shoot 'em up that I played on the Switch and has a lot in common with this one. Both of them really deliver on the front of that classic trance-like gameplay really allows you to zone out and be completely absorbed by what's happening on screen. Like another Playdate game, Whitewater Wipeout, there's only one mode and one stage here, so to speak, 
but it's a lot more varied. It's always unpredictable, exciting every time, and keeps you coming back for more. This is by far my favorite of the Playdate's high score chasers so far, and the most successful of this season in consistently pulling me back in to play a little more every time I see my Playdate sitting somewhere. Even if I intend to play a different game, I'll often just pick this thing up in my hands and see that Hyper Meteor logo and decide, well, I could, you know, give a few runs in Hyper Meteor to see if I can beat my high score. It's that kind of game. Coincidentally, the third-party Playdate game Bloom uh, also features an Asteroids-like as a minigame, so I guess there's just something about this console that seems like a good fit for that style, and it is. Hyper Meteor is a home run. You could gripe about wanting more modes or more options, but I think that this one is perfect in its simplicity. Speeding right along, the other game this week is called Zipper and it's a strategic action game from Bennett Foddy, who is infamous for making games like Quop, the browser game that challenges you to run using those four keys. And you can definitely sense a little bit of Quop DNA in Zipper, but it is much more refined than that. In Zipper, you play as a wronged samurai warrior out for revenge. Armed with a sword, your job is to mow down enemies in your path and storm the castle, but if you get hit a single time, your progress is reset all the way back to the beginning. So yeah, it's one of those. Combat in Zipper is sort of reminiscent of a strategy game like Final Fantasy Tactics, in that you're facing enemies on a grid of squares and you take turns moving to approach them, but it's been distilled down to a much simpler form. You can actually move as far as you want in any one direction, as many spaces as you want, all in one go. Essentially, to put it in chess terms, you're a rook, but the enemies all get to move the same amount of spaces as you plus one, and they do so immediately after you move. So if you just go as far as you can every single time, there's a good chance they catch up to you and take you down. The trick is to move little by little to position yourself properly, then zip past them when you have the right spot. Because if you make contact with an enemy, you'll be able to kill them before they can move and kill you. You know that thing in anime where they zoom past each other and then the one guy falls over dramatically in the background? That's basically what you're doing in Zipper over and over again. However, you only have so many moves you can make total throughout the game. So if you make your movements too small, you will run out of steam before getting anywhere. In my playthrough, I never actually ran out of moves, so I didn't feel like it was too big of a deterrent. It doesn't really limit you in your options, but it's important that it's there just to give you a little bit of pressure so you can't just take every screen one step at a time. Instrumental to the zipper process is the Playdate's crank. Although you don't use it to directly move or attack, rotating the crank will give you a preview of exactly where your enemies are going to move to if you commit to your own movement, and whether or not they'll be able to kill you from that position. Without this feature, the game would just be a whole lot of frustrating guesswork, but utilizing it properly, you should always know whether a movement is safe for you to make or not. If a movement will result in your death, you'll hear a little chime, which you'll quickly come to associate with bad things. There were a couple of enemy types who I found did not always reliably give the chime and ended up killing me when I thought I should have been safe. And I'm still not 100% sure if that's a choice or a bug, but for the most part, the preview crank option worked effectively and helped me out a lot. Now this might sound like it removes the strategy from the game, you know, knowing whether or not something will be safe before you even move there, but it really doesn't. The enemy's positions are varied enough and there's different types of enemies that move in different ways and have different weapons, so it's still an interesting challenge to overcome them, and trust me, I died enough times to prove that the game is not too easy. Diving headfirst into Zipper, it can be very intimidating, not knowing exactly what you're doing or how the systems work. But after experimenting and understanding how the enemies all move, things do start to come together. 
At first, the game is about taking down screens of enemies like a series of miniature chess matches, but after dying over and over again, you're eventually going to learn exactly how to overcome each screen quickly, and then the game is about maximizing your efficiency and finding the correct path through the game world to reach the end. Certain elements are randomized each time you play, so you never know exactly what you're going to find, but sooner or later you'll start to memorize the layout of the map, as well as which paths are the easiest for you to cut across. Dying can be frustrating for sure, but when you know what you're doing, you can probably make it back to where you were before within just a few minutes. The actual game really isn't that big, but it feels big when you're first getting started, especially when you're replaying early sections of it again and again. When it starts getting really fun and satisfying is after playing a lot, you feel like you've mastered the game's techniques, and being forced to go through everything multiple times is actually really rewarding in the end. The graphics are simple, but it does a lot with a little. The game really effectively utilizes the contrast between black and white zones. And the environments are just varied enough to keep things interesting. It'll make you want to explore to find out exactly what you're going to find around the next corner. And some of the later rooms, which I won't talk about, things do get more puzzly there, and you have to be extra creative to progress past them. By the way, you might have noticed that each transition between rooms in the game appears kind of stiff and juddery. That is just a result of the Playdate's capture software making it look that way in the video. When you're actually playing it on the Playdate, it's all super smooth. There's more that I could say about Zipper in terms of the nitty gritty mechanics and strategies that I find fascinating, but to sum it up without going too long, this is another one that just feels good to play. Bennett Foddy really nails the sound effects and the look of the movements. It's fast, it's cool, it's strategic, it's difficult, but not unfair. And after you've finished, you can play the game again to try to complete it in as few moves as possible if you're into that for an added challenge. The game is Zipper and it's a really cool action game that I would highly recommend. I'm just gonna say it, week six is my favorite week of releases in Playdate season one so far. Hyper Meteor is that perfect addictive score chaser that feels right at home as a mobile title, and Zipper is an experience with a little more depth and very inventive mechanics. Simple to learn, but complex enough to make mastery feel like a real accomplishment. These two games alone have almost justified the purchase of this system for me personally. I couldn't be happier with them, and I think that if these were available on more mass market platforms, Steam, Switch, phones, whatever, I think that these would be pretty popular. I think they would be huge. They're that good. If you're watching this and you've got a play date, you've had the chance to play these games maybe, let me know what you think. If this has been your favorite, if you agree that you love these two games, or if one or both of them didn't quite work for you, you can talk to me in the comments down below, or maybe you're just a fan of these developers and you're looking forward to hopefully someday being able to play them. Either way, you can talk to me down there. And if you want, you can subscribe so you can find my reviews of the other season one Playdate games that'll be elsewhere on the channel. That's it for now. See you guys next week.